It's a beautiful Sunday, and we it's time for a Sunday matinee live from New York. Although, is anybody actually in New York? Yes, we have a couple of people actually in New York. I'm still stuck in Florida. Uh, our, I'd, I'd like to introduce the players to you now. We got Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi. We have Margaret. Hello, Margaret. Oh. Margaret lives out near me in Jersey, so yay! Uh, Morgan, one of the three Canadians in this uh, in this show. Uh, anybody who thinks they know who the Canadians are, you can guess in the comment section below. And uh, if you uh, get it right, you'll get a hockey stick. <laughs> <laughs> we have Annika. Hi, Annika. Hey. hey, hey. <laughs> we have we have another Canadian. We got Amanda. I'm telling you who the Canadians are. There's it's only one other. And, no, and Natalie, can... maybe Natalie's the Canadian. Hi, Natalie. Hello. Do I sound Canadian? <laughs> Could be. Could be. And uh, hey, I'm Scotty Watson over here. Fuck off with all that, etc. and so forth. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Hey, we're going to do a form for you now called That Makes Me Think Of. That Makes Me Think Of starts with a suggestion. It's coming from you, by the way. I have I got suggestions earlier. comes from you, and through monologues and scenes, we kind of explore the subconscious of where that suggestion came from. We start with one thing, monologue, scene, monologue, scene, monologue, scene, always exploring the thing that happened, that just happened, until we end up with something brand new at the end. Maybe. I don't know. Could be. Hey, our, our suggestion comes from the interwebs, which is full of tubes and wires, and it is from Melissa Kirshner Broadhurst, and uh, the suggestion is uh, baby peacocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the entire cast to go away, turn off your, ca your camera, turn off your, your uh, microphone, and uh, I am going to ask, oh wait, where's, where's Amanda? I am here. I wasn't sure. Back. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, except for you. No, I didn't say. I said everybody. So don't you worry. That was me. That was me. Uh, <clears throat> Amanda, I, I was wondering if you would be so kind as to tell us, uh, what do you think of when I say the words baby peacocks? Uh, well, that makes me think of one of the most interesting taxidermy shops I've ever been to. Uh, it was in Kansas City. I can't remember the name of it. I want to say it was Oracle. It had an O at the beginning. Uh, but what I really appreciated about it, because I do love natural history and I find uh, biology really interesting, is that everything in their store is natural or ethically sourced. So they don't have a single thing in there. And I mean, the smaller items, I don't know how they can like really track that a shark's tooth has been ethically sourced. But they did have a beautiful peacock in there, a taxidermy peacock. It was absolutely gorgeous. And as we're discussing, like, is this thing eth ethically sourced? It was because it had been someone's pet. And I guess when um, the peacock had passed, they were very, very sad about this, but they also didn't, I guess, maybe want their deceased pet in their house. So they'd given it to the shop to sell. And um, so that is probably my biggest memory about uh, baby pe peacocks. Anna, look at that. Oh my God, that looks like a real peacock. You know what? That looks a little bit like my ex. He, I'm telling you, he pr just pruned himself all the time. He pruned himself. He just strutted around <laughs> every time. Yes, he did. And he was a little bit obnoxious. Oh, more than a little bit, I remember. Yeah, you, you kind of warned me about that, and I, I didn't quite get it. And now I'm just, I'm just seeing the resemblance. It's unbelievable. I mean, it is. Yeah. Yes. Inordinate pride. You know, he thought he was a beautiful specimen of everything. Well, he kind of was, actually. He was very well dressed. Unlike well, I, my ex. My ex was a slob. Yeah, but your ex was faithful, wasn't he? Uh, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm not 100% sure he was, but the main thing was, was he was such a slob. He showered once a week. Ew. Well, that's kind of gross. But I, I also felt a little strange sometimes when I saw you looking at my ex. Well, your ex 
always smelled very good. I have to give him that. Yeah. I will give him. Go ahead. Right? He smelled good, but he didn't appear didn't to be. Yeah. But, yeah. But, 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 but truthfully, there was nothing between you and, you know, my ex, I don't think. Um, no, well, I, he was flirt, he was a little flirtatious, and I never wanted to tell you because I didn't want to upset you. It was, it was hard to miss. His, his actions were a little bit grandiose. Yeah, he, tact was not his big, you know, you're well rid of him. You really are well rid of him. We no, but I'm just thinking about our friendship now, you know, now that he's gone, like how, how trustworthy, you know, are we to each other? Oh, Anna, come on. Look, Pat, it's nothing personal. I just want to know where, you know, how do we stand? If I can, you know, if I can meet somebody and then you eye him also, like, you know, what's that going to do with our relationship? Well, I noticed you sniffing my ex. That I could take exception to that. Well, that's because he was so odorous. Yeah, but you had to come close to notice that. Okay, I'll give you that one, but to be continued. <laughs> right. Thank you, Annika and Margaret. Uh, that makes me think of the idea of being proud. Um, and I feel like every time I feel confident, I trip or I, I like one time I literally was feeling so good about myself and my outfit. And then I literally <laughs> fell down the stairs. Um, and my date was like, and there's, you know, like, Oh, it's not the, the greatest first impression. Um, the other time that I was feeling especially confident, I got pooped on by a pigeon. Um, although I have been pooped on previously. That's a lot of peas in one sentence. I got pooped on by a pigeon four times. And I'm actually told that this is, is good luck. Um, but when a pigeon poops like on your forehead, um, not only is it disgusting, um, but it's very off-putting and not the best conversation continuer. And on that note, I'm going to go. You're looking at me as if there's something really wrong. Um, uh, Amanda, that pigeon pooped on your head. Look up. Like on my head? On your head. There, there, there. Oh, yeah. Uh, everywhere, oh. Ev everywhere, 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 everywhere. Oh, oh, hold on. I have a, I have a paper towel in my bag. You know, oh. I keep everything with me. I just had my hair done today too. Oh, my no I'm so sorry. And you were going to go out with Ronnie and everything. I mean, it couldn't have happened at a worse time. I can't go out for dinner like this. I mean, <sighs> it's, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll do something different to your hair. I mean, it, this will be a good omen for your date. Pigeon poop yeah. is considered one of the yeah. most lucky things you can have happen. My aunt used to get pooped on, on the beach all the time by seagulls. And your aunt did win the lottery. So she there is that. did the Powerball. So I think I think you can deal with the little pigeon poop in your hair. Okay, well, I'll just you know maybe if I fashion a braid, yeah, that will hide it. There we go. I can just hey, yeah. never know. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. Ronnie's not going to care. I mean, he might care, but he won't care. And I can always sit with my chin up. That's right. You can't see the back of my head then, can you? I know. Although when you look really like proud and full of yourself. It's 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 not a becoming look. I just no, you're right. I just want to, I just want to mention that because sometimes it makes guys think that you're above them. And I don't want him to think I'm above him, do I? No, no. no. Oh. And, and sometimes you you have that air, and then you think you're above people, and then you end up, you know, falling or you know. <laughs> I mean, it's cute though. It's endearing. 
it was like that doctor, wasn't it? The one who I convinced that I was like on the higher level of, of practice than him. And of course I wasn't. And he realized very quickly when I didn't know what ascramento meant. Exactly. But, oh. That that is a big word. I I don't even know what that is, but uh, you know. no, I I still don't know what it means. Oh. But so don't sit up, sit down. Do you know what? I'm just going to go to the bathroom and get my hair tidied up a bit, and I'll tell you how it goes tomorrow. Please do. I'm there for you, really. I know. Love you lots. Thank you, Carrie and Natalie. That was great. And that makes me think of not pigeon poop, but actually dog poop. I used to volunteer at a local shelter and I absolutely loved it. And I loved the dogs and I loved uh, the, most, of, most of the people. But what I didn't like was picking up after the dogs. Um, and I noticed that a lot of volunteers did not. And very often that's where I started the habit of not wearing the same shoes indoors and out. As soon as I got home, I would take off my shoes and leave them outside. And I would still to this day, I have a separate pair of indoor shoes and a separate pair of outdoor shoes because I know what's out there and what you can step on without realizing it. So uh, my husband thinks I'm crazy because I keep on changing my shoes. But once you've walked dogs like I do, and you, you'll do the same. You smell that, right? Um, yeah. Oh. I wonder, I was you trying this new deodorant. Come here, come here. Uh, no? Oh, no? that's actually nice, I like that. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. Cause it's, it's, it's called um, Spider Monkey. Oh, cause it's Trump. Yeah, I'm getting like the, the passion fruity yeah. sort of. Yeah, no, that's nice. That is not the, that is not the issue. I, I don't think they would make a deodorant that would smell like this. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, oh, if you go, I'm gonna, I'm just, okay. 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 Oh, you know, when your mouth gets all watery and you just. Yeah, or then your eyes start to water and yeah. you're crying, but you're. But you're just crying tears of stink. You know, like, I try to clean. I try. And the infestation, I think, is just too much. I know. I, I, you're a beautiful housekeeper. Like, that's why I love being your roommate. But I don't think this is you. I think this is the building. I think the building is just maybe rotting from the outside in. Yeah, like, the, like it's just coming out from the vents as well yeah. and coming up like I up I hear stuff nose. what's that it's up the nose it's in the eyes <sighs> you hear stuff I, as well yes last night it was it was like a banging in the uh, in the attic and uh hmm. yeah I thought I heard it too but I was like maybe it was just a dream and I was like oh, no God. I think I think we gotta move out or yeah yeah yeah, we got, we definitely, wait a second. Put your foot up for a second. Oh, Morgan, there's poop on your shoe. Oh, no. <sighs> you know what? Every time, every time that, that I, oh, sorry. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Every, every time I try to be like, you know, confident and, and lovely, I step in poop. It's not your fault. It's Mrs. Dubchek, that little poodle of hers. She lets it poop in the hallway. The pooper poodle. Yeah, yeah. It's a real poodle, if you know what I mean. Yeah, poo. Yeah. Yeah. Turd dog. It's not your fault. We got to get out of here. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, but could you just maybe put your shoe in yeah. the hallway for... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's... Uh, yeah. That's, that's got to be a big one. Yeah, I'll get this, this for Breeze. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, that was great. You know, that makes me think of the time when I had um, a baby turtle. And 
how do I get from a dog to a turtle? Well, I had tried to have puppies and my parents wouldn't let it, let it, let them stay. So I got a turtle thinking that that would help me just feel better as a kid. I was about eight or nine and it did. I named him Gregory. He was about six inches big circumference and he followed me. He followed me from room to room. Sometimes he pooped on the floor, but I, I cleaned it up. It was not a problem. Uh, I think sometimes he wee-weed on the floor too. And that was not a problem. But then one day my mother brought in a cat and um, Gregory didn't last very long. I almost killed that cat. I was so furious. <laughs> You got a baby turtle. Oh my God, it's cute. Oh, can I stroke him? Oh. Here, you can hold Gregory. Oh, thanks. Oh, Nancy. Thanks, Emma. Oh. He's, a, I've always wanted a pet. Well, he's my pet. I know, but I can come and visit him, I hope. Sure, you can come and visit him. Uh, you can have visitation. Oh, can I babysit him when you're out? No, you can have visitation. I guess supervised, huh? Supervised, yeah. Sounds like you don't trust me, Emma. Yeah, take him back. You obviously don't trust me. Well, I don't trust you, but this is a way to start the trust process. Huh. Yeah. I mean, I learned that, yes, I learned that from reading a book on trust. I always knew you read too many books. Okay. Tell me about trust. Well, first of all, what I read about trust is that trust issues is what broke up our relationship. Oh, I didn't realize we were broken up. You moved. What was I supposed to think? You moved away. I just you moved, to... you moved in with Josie. I just need a little more space. Well, and you... the rent was cheaper with Josie. Well, that's why I got Gregory. I mean, I, I, I don't like being alone. I have, no. I have issues with being alone. And Emma, you should have told me that. I didn't know that. You should have told me that. Well, I also have issues being honest. And, and, I, and, and so I'm learning about my issues. And, and Gregory's helping me. Oh, well, also then he is what, what do they call that? He's my therapy pet. He's yes. therapy. Oh, yes. that makes so much sense. My therapy reptile. And he's, he's, like, he's really, really good at listening. I can see that. And I guess you can take him on a plane, right? You can take him in anywhere. I, I could, you know. I don't know if, if, if it's good, if altitude is good for turtles, but, you know, I'll read up on that too. I have a, a book on reptiles as well. Wow. I always thought you read the way you read is just unbelievable. Thank you. Maybe there's a chance for us. Maybe. Thank you, Clary Margaret. Therapist pets. I like that. Well, that makes me think about what happens when couples separate and the children are young and discovering themselves and the choices they make and how their childhoods and growing up impacted them. And it makes me think about when you're discovering yourself for the first, discovering things for the first time, you know, who you are, what you want out of life. Do you want to follow the career path your parents took? Do you want to take a curveball and try something completely different to them? Or do you just want to follow the path of your friends? You know, it's decision time, isn't it? It's that whole thing of making a decision and discovering yourself. Which way will you go? Which job will you take? Will you like the job you choose? Which way will you go? You look really lost today. 
yeah, I can't decide which path to take. The right hand path or the left hand? I mean, is the middle an option? Because I usually like to go for the middle so I don't have to make a choice. Well, the middle is safety. And I've had that. I don't like safety. Safety sucks. I want something more daring. I want something more fulfilling. I think this is just my opinion. You can take this or leave this. I think the purple mohawk is going to look a lot better than, you know, the pink one. <sighs> okay. Ah, that's your, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. But you I've got to make my, my own decision. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say that that shows what you actually want. You didn't like the one I chose. You know what it was? It wasn't that I didn't like it exactly. It's just that it didn't come from my my soul. You know, I kind of need need that that feeling of like this is it. This mm -hmm. is the real thing. Okay. I've had too many false starts. And, I, and I'm just sick and tired of all these phony people giving me their phony baloney, and I want the real thing. Well, that's and why I, I'm yeah. going to give you a tarot reading. This does come from you. It seems like it comes from the spirits, but it actually comes from you. Cool. Okay. But tarot cards don't really tell What are you anything. making that face for? What did it say? Ugh. Okay, so, you know, tarot cards can be read in a lot of different ways. One interpretation of this spread. Yeah. You have about a week to live. That's great, because I am going to swing from the rafters. I'm going to do everything I want in this week. This is something I have always dreamed of, knowing when I'm going to go and then going out with a blast. I'm making my reservations today. I'm going to Tahiti. And then after that, I'm going to Taiwan because I've always wanted to visit it. Wow. We and might I'm, as well have a cigar to celebrate. Cigar? I mean, no, cigars what? are bad for you. They'll kill you. Huh. Interesting take you've got in life. No, oh, man, please. Great scene, Annika and Amanda. Making decisions in life, choosing a path. That makes me think of when I was growing up in Iowa. Um, when you grow up in this small town and I grew up in Marion, Iowa, everything is an adventure except from where you're from. And I ended up just wanting adventures and wanting to try different things. And um, first I moved to California, which wasn't that much of a stretch because my mom had moved out there. And um, so I went to college in California and then I lived in L I, I was in Southern California, like Orange County. I lived in LA for like six months and I moved, lived in San Francisco and I probably lived in about 20 different apartments. And my mother used to say like, I can't, I keep erasing the page, your page in my address book because I can never remember your phone number or where you live. And from there I moved to New York. And so I just finally feel like I'm settling down. And it took me about 30 years. Just opening up another box. Mug set. You know, I, th I think having one of those, you know, cupboards and cupboards of mugs it it helps with choice like you have all sorts of mugs different moods you know whatever mood i'm in there's a mug for it plus it means i don't have to keep washing up yeah definitely i've lost quite a few in the moves you know i had more yeah, yeah. i do wonder how long i'll be here this time well, I would miss you if you left. I don't plan on moving, but I just get this itch, you know? It, it, people say 
seven year itch for me it's like seven week itch and then I feel like I need to move on you're like one of the only people in the in the like world who gets me you know who understands who I can talk to about anything well if you ever get an itch you could just come with me I, okay, you know what? I've been wanting to change everything. I've been wanting, like, I have a little bit of savings. And I have plenty of mugs. Like, in fact, I think this mug would suit your mood perfectly. Storm, storm dust cloud, I call it. Oh, my God. And it's, like, just sort of tiny and delicate, but, oh. But strong so, and reliable. Right? Oh, I love it. So seven weeks. I usually move every seven weeks. So we have seven weeks here. So we'll have enough time to, you know, make it feel homely and maybe, maybe give it a coat of paint. But then we'll move on somewhere else. It doesn't have to be too far. It could be just two states over. What about, what about Tahiti? I, I think, you know, someplace tropical or, uh, uh, you know, someplace super warm. You know, I'm sick of the rain and the snow. Tropical mug. Perfect for sitting on the beaches at Tahiti. Yes. Right? Yes. And I have a mug somewhere that's perfect for when you're going riding. It's got like a, a non spill cap on the top of it. So when we want to go horse riding along the beach, we can still have a cup of tea. I'm... Uh, I'm allergic to horses. Uh, I'll take some medicine. Yes, 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 yes. We'll have medicine for it. Perfect. Yes. I'll go and book us for seven weeks from now. I can't wait. <laughs> and so, uh, Melissa Kirshner Broadhurst, when you say baby peacocks, we think of packing up our mugs and moving to Tahiti. Come on back, everybody. Let's give, give a big round of applause. Yay! Thank you again to Melissa for our suggestion. Thank you to the players who were wonderful. Thank you, Carrie and Morgan and Margaret and Amanda and Natalie and Annika. And thank you for watching Improv on a Sunday matinee. I'm your host, Scotty Watson, and we'll see you around. Thanks for watching Improv.